preview to the 1998 Group 19 Rugby League Grand Final as the minor premiers, the Armadale Greens, make their way onto the field. The fullback is Ben Edwards, the wingers are Shannon Prindle wearing two and Gavin Taggart wearing five. The setters are Robert John Griffiths in three and Gary Davidson in four. The 5'8", Damian McCann, the halfback Preston Connors, the lock-in captain coach is Craig Waters, 13. Second row is Warren Lund wearing 11, Andrew McGann wearing 12. The props are Dave Campbell wearing number eight. Number 10 is Lindsay Snell. And Jamie Afthorpe is the Armadale Galloping Greens hooker. And their opponents this afternoon, the Inverell Hawks, led out by their captain, coach and lock forward, Craig Sandler. The full side, full back is David Cook. The wingers are Glenn Partridge in two and uh, Shannon Zappin in five. The centers, Craig Goldman in three, Scott Park in four. The 5'8", Damian Smith in six. Seven is David Walls, the halfback. Craig Sandler, the lock forward and captain, coach on your screen now. The second row is so Mick McLennan and Steve Goham. The props are uh, Tim McIntyre and James Stevens. And Peter Stevens is the hooker for the Inverell Hawks. And so we're set for the kickoff of the 1998 Group 19 Rugby League Grand Final. On your screen now, the Inverell Hawks wearing the red and white. And they will kick off in the first half. The referee is referee Jason Higgins of Gledinus, having his first senior appointment in Group 19 as far as the Grand Final is concerned this afternoon. Armadale Galloping Greens go into this match as uh, very short price favourites. They are the minor premiers. They won that by six points. They won the major semi-final against Glen Innes two weeks ago. Inverell eliminated Glen Innes Magpies in the final last week. And so they find themselves at Rugby League Park this afternoon for the first grey grand final. As the whistle sounds, we have 80 minutes of what we hope will be top-class rugby league in front of us as Damien McCann takes the ball from the kick-off and immediately passes to Dave Campbell. And joining me in commentary this afternoon is a man who knows what grand finals are all about. He knows what premierships are all about because he coached the Greens to a premiership in 1995 when they beat Glenninus. I talk of Steve Robinson. Steve, good afternoon to you. Yes, good afternoon to you, Greg, and we're looking forward to a wonderful game of rugby league here this afternoon at Rugby League Park, Armadale. Well, we've got a very strong breeze blowing as the ball's been taken forward by uh, Scott Park for the Inverell side just outside the quarter. As I said, a very, uh, David Cook that was, a very strong breeze blowing. Who will it favour in this first half, Steve? It's coming across the ground. I don't think it has any direct uh, favour for any side at present, but it may change around uh, as the afternoon progresses. Well, Inverell and Armadale have met on four occasions this uh, season as we see a penalty against the uh, Armadale side with uh, a player being held down, referee Higgins immediately ruling against Armadale. But uh, the sides have met on four occasions this year. In the pre-season final, they finished at 36 apiece. The first round, Armadale won 34-32. The second round, Armadale won convincingly at Armadale. And the third round in a quagmire, the game finished at 14 points all. So here's the Hawks' first chance. Uh, they're just outside the quarter, about 32 metres out. The dummy half is David Walls. A pass comes away to the big second rower for the Inverell side. And that is Mick McLennan, Northern Division player of this year. He's just outside the quarter, throws the left hand to at Andrew McGann. Now it comes away to David Cook. David Cook's about 10 metres out. The Hawks running left to right on your screen. Walls at dummy half. Long pass. Uh, cross the field goes Peter Stevens. That would have been forward as Craig Sammer went without it. Armadale's dived on it. And Steve, it's uh, very obvious that Inverell are going to have to start and start well because Armadale have so much strength all over the paddock. Yes, yeah, very true, uh, Greg. Playing at home is a great advantage for the Armadale club. They have uh, started this game with favourites and certainly Inverell can uh, ill afford to come up with errors such as uh, that just committed on the attack towards the Armadale line. Preston Connors brings it away. Gee, he's been a form player this year, Preston Connors. He's an improved player. Yes, they've spoken very highly of him here at Armadale this season. They tell me that it's the best he's played for a long while. He played setters, of course, last year in the Armadale uh, Greens title win. And this year they've moved him into the position he prefers, and that is uh, on the uh, halfback spot. As Armadale now have the ball. That was Shannon Trindle with it. It's played away. Uh, that's Craig Waters. He'll have a big uh, impact on this game. As uh, Davy McCann gets up towards the halfway line, the ball's gone loose. Dived on that there by another player. It's Apthorpe. And the referee, Higgins, says play on. Campbell, short pass away to a uh, player coming forward. That's uh, Lindsay Snell in the headgear. And referee ruling against Mick McLennan for a high shot. He said keep them down. I don't know if we get a replay of that at all. But he's uh, just indicated to uh, Mick McLennan to keep them down as Armadale take the kick for touch on the grandstand side of the field. Very really big crowd here at Rugby League Park at Armadale for the grand final. Glenn Ennis winning the reserve grade in a thriller, 42 points to 32. And the under-18s are won by Inverell in extra time, 26-14 over Armadale. Dave Campbell raiding away. Now, Dave Campbell, for our, uh, our viewers, he looks, he looks a fellow who would probably go five minutes. But by gee, he's given great... Uh, 
great service to the Armidale Club this year. Craig Waters uses him very, very well. As let's have a look at the, uh, the Armidale bench on the sideline watching on as the ball's been knocked on by Armidale and the scrum will pack as you see David Walls picking it up. But Dave Campbell, uh, as I said, Steve, he's uh, a real shock weapon for this Armidale side. It's very true, Greg. He's a very good player, Dave Campbell. He possesses very good ball skill, and uh, if he can get to the line and have some uh, runners trailing him, it wouldn't be out of place to see him put runners uh, through holes and uh, can create havoc to the Everell side. Well, Armadale's won uh, two of the last three grand finals. You coached them to victory in 94. Uh, 94, Greg. 95, and in 97, last yeah. year, they beat Gyra. That's correct. Uh, Craig Waters has done a wonderful job with this uh, Armadale club. Uh, this is two seasons here and uh, two grand finals so he's obviously uh, doing something right. It's a while since they've uh, won one here though or we even had one here. Well, I believe it's 28 years since they've won a premiership here at Rugby League Park Armidale and uh, I'm sure there'll be uh, some long and hard celebrations if they uh, can achieve that here this afternoon. Okay and uh, I think they've won 15 straight at Rugby League Park they haven't been beaten since I think round one or something last year. Damien Smith with it for the Hawks now just outside the 22 metre line short line David Walls Looks pass away to Scott Park. Scott, a former Crushers player, played lower grades with St George. He came to Inverell um, earlier this year after having a season with the Crushers. Stevens across the way to McLennan. McLennan in the gap. McIntyre went without it. Picked up by Dave Campbell's. Picked up the crumbs. And uh, that was an opportunity gone missing. Now there's an Armadale player down flat on his back under the goalpost. As we see, I think it's Davidson or one of the players running out. And it was Preston Connors, the player who was uh, injured. Now from dummy half. We were on the far side brought down. Perhaps a few uh, grand final nerves uh, have crept in here, Greg. There's been a, a few uh, loose balls about, and uh, you can only put that down to the pressure of playing the grand final. So perhaps uh, the senior players on each side should uh, uh, have a word to the younger blokes and try and uh, settle them down and get their mind on the job. They're about eight metres short of the halfway line. That's McGann playing it to Apthorpe. Away to McCann. McCann and McGann, not to be confused. Shoulder charge coming in from Goan on Lunn. Underneath him went Jim Stevens. Uh, Craig Waters, now he's dropped it, that's the second time Craig's dropped it, and he's looking at the ground uh, as if to say, well that's a total frustration, and uh, an easy uh, take has been spilled just short of the Armadale Lord, just short of the halfway line. Scrum packing, David Walls feeds, Jason Higgins as I said having his first Group 19 Grand Final, as Troy Garwin, former Imperial halfback, only playing in the centres because they have a lack of centres in the club. He's 12 inside the territory of Armadale. Big Tim McIntyre going forward. Fine effort. Gets a pass away to David Cook. The fullback, former Armadale player, spots the gap. Up over the quarter line he goes. Tackle needed, needed to be made by Andrew McGann and also uh, Davidson, Gary Davidson. Stevens out to Salmon, out to Goldman. He's got the winger with him, but Goldman takes the tackle just short of the try line. Good tackle too. He had Shannon Salmon outside. Now pass comes back. As it comes back to Stevens, Stevens long pass, loose pass, picked up by Goan on the quarter. The big blockbusting second rower tries to accelerate. He can't. He gets it to Cook. Now it goes to Scott Park. Six to go, says the referee. It's been touched by Armadale, and Park's ten metres out. I don't know whether David Cook saw the uh, six tackle. He was indicated he was going to kick. He must have because he's taken the tackle. Five metres out. The tackler was Robbie John Griffiths. Now to Stevens, little Stevens, touched by Armadale. That'll be six to go if they get back. Oh, I thought it was touched by Armadale. One of the players suggesting that. I don't know whether to get a look at that again. As Jason Higgins and David Walls have a bit of a joke on the field over something. But I don't, I, we're going to have a look at the replay. I thought as Stevens attempted to get that ball away, but it was touched by Armadale. No, I think it's come off the Inverell player and gone forward, Greg, and uh, as suggested by the referee. And uh, this will be a bit of welcome relief for the Armadale side who have been under a bit of pressure early in the game. Preston Connors takes it away from the scrum base and uh, he's met 15 metres out. Very good crowd here at Rugby League Park. Good to see a grand final at, at Armadale because they were such a strong group, particularly in the old Group 5. Oh, now Davids and Spiller from Dummy Half have stripped out. Referee said six to go. Good call. Troy Goldman, he said, interfered. Now it goes out to Apthorpe. Apthorpe having to run the hooker at open play and he says that, Jim Stevens, you're inside the 10 metres. Damien Smith was the other tackler there. And they get a relieving penalty. Well, it hasn't been a high-class start to this match. Yes, as I mentioned earlier, Greg, a, a number of errors. But what concerns me is Inverell have been on the attack on two occasions towards the Armadale line and have put the ball down. Armadale haven't been in the similar attacking position as yet. Perhaps uh, this might be an opportunity for them to uh, capitalise on some yardage. Well, a couple of more runs like that from Dave Campbell, and they'll, they'll be up there pretty quickly. As uh, with the ball is Andrew McGann. They're 15 inside the territory. Now it goes, Lindsay still it was, that not it McGann. Now it goes to Waters. 
and Waters is held. About 32 metres out, Apthorpe, short pass away to Lund, Lund on the blind side, Craig Salmon, but again he's got the Inverdell players for being inside the 10. This time he's pointed straight across at Jim Stevens and uh, also Stephen Goan for being inside the 10. I'd take a kick for here, but they're going to take a tap. Lund gives, uh, throws a pass over the head of Apthorpe, over the head of everybody. McCann goes back, Connor says, hey, listen, I wanted that. Now it goes to uh, McCann, and McCann's on the 23 metre line. He'll play it now. That's uh, McGann, away to Connors. They've got no runners, Armadale. He takes them on himself. Well, they're a bit disorganised in the early exchanges, particularly Armadale. Now McCann, away it goes to Craig Waters. He has runners inside him. If you give him to Apthorpe, he was under the post. Now it goes back further afield to Lund. It comes out to the uh, centre three-quarter in Robbie John Griffiths, and he's held. Shannon Trindle is the winger on this side of the field, but it goes to the open side. Away it goes to Lindsay Snell, and Snell's met. He's only 12 metres out. That's tackle five on the greens. Connor's with it to cross field. Little kick over the head of McIntyre. Oh, beautifully scooped up back there. Was that Shannon Zemmett? It was, and he uh, certainly displayed great hands there. He'll get a job with the cricket team after that, Robbo, I can tell you. Here's Troy Goldman. He's got plenty of pace up over the corner line. 12 short of halfway. Tackle had to be made by uh, Ben Edwards, but he didn't have to delete the second tackle. We see this a lot. It's a real coach killer. Players are held. They're not going anywhere. And I suppose to allow your defence to get organised, the second tackle comes in. So the referee just indicating to uh, Armadale to uh, make sure that they uh, clear the tackle player pretty quickly as the ball lands on the grandstand roof where we're positioned. Now it, uh, from the restart, it's Mick McLennan taking it forward for the Inverell Hawks. They're 10 metres inside the Greens territory. Tim McIntyre. McIntyre, short little pass to Scott Park. I think the Inverell Hawks supporters would be wanting Scott Park to be involved today because I think even by his standards he's had a pretty quiet season with the Hawks this year. He's had a hamstring injury admittedly, but um, I think they want him to get involved and today's the day when he could stand up. Steve Gawain, crossfield. He's got a replacement player going with him. Uh, that is Marcus Woodbury, a junior of last year. He's uh, suffered a bit with injury this year, but he's on straight away. Stevens looks for runners inside. Tim McIntyre, what a magnificent pass. And Timmy McIntyre run to the post. Oh, Peter Stevens, take a bow. He crucified Glenn Innes last week with that sort of play. And the little hooker, when I say li look a little, he's not high, but he's certainly around. They call him Rolls, but they'll call him a hero after that pass to Timmy McIntyre. Uh, they call him Cherry, and he scored right under the uprights for a fantastic four-point lead to the Inverell Hawks, as we'll have a look at the replay for Grant McCarroll Ford, but the Hawks have started exactly how they wanted to, and they lead by four points to nil Robbo as we have a look at it. Yes, yeah, so you just see here, uh, Peter Stevens going to the line, tucks the ball underneath, a great money ball to Timmy McIntyre, running like a three-quarter. He'll be very happy about that. And very, the score, sorry, Robbo. They're very important in playing in an away grand final to score first, and this will give Inverell a tremendous amount of confidence. It certainly will. They lead by four points to nil. Now, the man who made the try got the little pass behind the defence, Peter Stevens, from right in front. Left foot set over the uprights. Good enough for the touch charges as the crowd looks on here at Rugby League Park. Armadale is Inverell 6, leading Armadale nil. It's Wagons Ho at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale for the used wagon stampede. Just look at this hard to find EF Falcon 4 litre 5 speed manual. One local owner and under 44,000 Ks. A 97 4 litre T Bar Auto Ford Futura with air, power steer, cruise control, and ABS. And save thousands on new car price for this Falcon GLI wagon in excellent condition. Yeehaw! Come and let's do a quality used wagon at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale during the Wagons Ho stampede. KFC's new Crispy Strips Family Feast. Six delicious crispy strips, eight pieces of chicken, large chips, large coleslaw, large potato and gravy, and a 1.25 litre Pepsi. All for just $19.95. We know you're up there, boy! Come in, come in, get me! Well, he could be anywhere, Sheriff. Flush him out. Kellogg's Crunchy Nut Corn Flakes, coated with honey, encrusted with nuts and totally irresistible. I'm coming down. And I'm coming down too. Hmm? I'm coming down. Kellogg's crunchy nut cornflakes. The trouble is they taste too good. It's time to have your say about the future of Tamworth. It's about your children's future and the future of the city. It's about more jobs, modern facilities and community improvement. It's about positive economic growth. 
there will be a special public meeting at the Town Hall at 7.30 on Tuesday, September the 29th. Have your say about your city's future. Authorised by Vicky Levendell for the Tamworth Future Now Committee, Tamworth. Performance, reliability and value. Ford Laser started it all. Good looking laser now at Grant McCarroll Ford. It's the right size vehicle with original qualities in abundance in today's up to the minute edition. See laser at Grant McCarroll Ford Armitale. The ball's uh, kicked off Gavin Taggart, it is the winger, her prolific twice, uh, scorer and goal kicker this year, particularly Gavin Taggart. Uh, 268 points for the highest point scorer this year, the winger Robbo. He is a tremendous goal kicker, Gavin Taggart, and he can score a try too, as you well remember last year's grand final, the length of the field effort. He keeps telling me, 95 metres. I thought it was about 50, but it got to 95 by season then. Oh, you know, footballers are like fishermen. OK, now we see in possession on the far side, Adam Kelly replacement on for the Hawks. So they've made a couple of replacements rather quickly. Marcus Woodbury's on, Adam Kelly's on. He made a great impact last week in the semi-final. First touch of the ball, he ran 70 metres. Zemmett on the wing. They're finding Armadale a bit short out wide. Armadale have started rather slowly, but we know they'll come home well. They're like a good Melbourne Cup horse. Just peaks at the right time. Long pass over the head. Damien Smith, 5'8", gives it to Go Goanne. Goanne up to the 10 metre line, still in the Greens territory. Interesting Peter Stevens, the, try, the uh, fellow who set the try up a moment ago, and he has the ball in his hands right now. He was the uh, captain of the Warriola side that defeated in Burrell in the grand final of 1996. So he's hoping to win two premierships with two clubs. As uh, Armidale have the ball, and uh, that's uh, Trindle, I think it is, the winger, just outside the corner line. From dummy half is the setter. That's Robbie John Griffiths running from that position. Warren Lund goes into dummy half. They're at sixes and sevens, Robbo, the Greens at the moment. They're at not much coordination. If we see Andrew again, take it away. Yeah, certainly Craig Waters will have to take control here. He'll have to just get those forwards running uh, running forward and setting up to create some room for the backs out wide. Dave Campbell's been in great form this year, but he's starting to run a bit of cross field today. Uh, Connors, he's a danger player. Look at him go straight through over the 10 metre line. Preston Connors, he's got a player coming with him. A take on the ground, it's Taggart. Taggart's got support. Oh, he's wrong for the David Cotton. He's on to score. Well, we just said a moment ago that he's a terrific try scorer. Have a look at that. He came to David Cook. He had water steaming up inside him, and he, he, you can see him say to himself, well, no, I'll do it myself. Well, David Cook's a very good defender, but I think young uh, Gavin Taggart's done it for pace here and got on the outside of him, and uh, that was the end of the section. Adam Kelly's about to come for the field. We'll have a look at the replay. So Armadale heading back just when we say Craig Waters needs to get these players organised. We'll try and have a look at the replay brought to you by Grant McCarroll Ford here on the Group 19 Grand Final. Six points to four, the Hawks lead, and have a look at this. As you see, Preston Connors going to the line, puts a bit of a step on, strong enough to stand in the tackle to uh, Gavin Taggart, and you just see here he looks to the inside, but just felt he had the pace factor on the outside of David Cook, and uh, this has been a tremendous reply for Armadale early in the game. Scoreline is six points to four. Well, that certainly made the Armadale supporters happy. Gavin Taggart will be very happy too if he can land the goal from out wide. Gee, he showed some a pace then. He wrong footed completely stood up David Cook, although Cook was on a hiding to nothing to fall back. He was standing still. Taggart had the whole field of work in. He's given it a big show. It's hit the upright and bounced away. No goal. So the scoreline remains in Burrell 6, leading Armadale 4. It's Wagons Ho at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale for the used wagon stampede. Ready for work or pleasure, this Ford Futura Auto Wagon with air, steer, low case, ABS brake, cargo barrier and price to sell. It's price right. This Auto ED Falcon with air and power steer. A neat and tidy 1990 Toyota Camry 2.0-litre 5-speed manual with air and steer plus excellent rego. Hard to find automatic Corolla 4x4 wagon with air and steer. Yeehaw! Come and lasso a quantity used wagon at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale during the Wagons Ho Stampede. For beautiful, healthy plants, just one serve of Osmocote feeds continuously for a whole nine months. Osmocote helps you mother nature. Peel Valley Tiles is your one-stop tile shop offering one of the largest ranges of quality wall and floor tiles in the Northwest. Whether you're building or renovating, Peel Valley Tiles will have the baths, spas, sinks and vanity units to suit your decor. All the popular brand names in toilet suites, shower screens, taps, laundry and kitchen sinks, plus ducts water systems are also on display. Check out the do-it-yourself bar and the vast range of accessories at Peel Valley Tiles and Ceramics or their distributors. Hey, remember how we all felt when we made that decision to send young Mark to Taz? How could I ever forget? A private school. You know what they say. Yeah! 
It's been nearly six months now and he's a different person. I didn't think Mark would ever settle down at school. Well, I reckon that one-on-one -on -one method of teaching has really helped him. He's finally caught up in maths. And he's quite the sportsman these days. I'd say it's the best thing we've ever done. Individual attention, the key to a better education. You're going to love your brand new Ford Festiva from Grant McCarroll Ford. Available in gutsy 1.5 or 1.3 litre with exciting new interiors, surprising big size, big value for money. Festiva, a very big car from Grant McCarroll Ford, Armadale. From the restart of play, as the ball is kicked off, back it goes to McCann, to Campbell. And that, that scenario has been repeated a lot this year, where uh, the ball's being kicked off, taken by McCann, short pass to Campbell, he runs it up. Now McCann, he's the, uh, the playmaker, runs across field, he runs into Snell on this occasion and dropped to the ground just outside the quarter line. It's six points to four in favour of the Inverell Hawks. They lead Armadale, Craig Waters out to Lund. There's un no doubt about it, the Armadale's been the form side of the Premiership and the very short price favourites. As Jameson Higgins, the referee, says, I warned you about a second tackle and uh, Lund getting slowly to his feet. The referee indicating you pushed him back down. Adam Kelly's left the field too, Steve. He didn't look well for the Inverell Hawks. Uh, no, he didn't, but I'm sure he'll be back. I give a bit of credit to Jason Higgins, the referee here in his first first-rate grand final. He has been consistent with the rule that uh, has brought about the penalty to the Armadale side, and uh, uh, referees, if they show consistency, there can be never any complaints. Lindsay Snell takes it up. Ten metres inside Inverell's territory. Trindle to dummy half. He darts away from there. Too many holes in the Hawks' forge. He makes a cheap pin, and it's forced uh, by Gawain to bring him down. A Connors, a whack goes to Campbell, the big and the small out there, isn't it? Little Preston on the big Dave and they knock him over. 30 out now. Dummy half Apthorpe, Craig Waters. They've got so many players can take it. First pass off the ruck and set things up. He's brought down inside the quarter line. 6-4. This is the Armadale that we've seen play most of the season. Right on the opposition try line. Warren Hunt out wide. Good pass, Scott Park. Knocked on by McCann. Pass went around. The idea was right. The execution wasn't. And uh, Inverell come up with a 12 metres out from the try line. As that's Glenn Partridge, the winger, uh, taking it up. Well, Inverell, uh, Darren Pay's now on for the Inverell Hawks, so they're making plenty of changes. Dave Campbell hasn't left the field yet for Armadale. We normally see him last about 15 minutes. And uh, the pass comes out to Craig Semmer, the captain coach. Bit of one-out stuff from the Hawks at the present time. They're 15 inside a very, very lush Armadale Rugby League Park. Full credit to the committee. He looks outstanding. Now the ball's gone astray, referee Jason Higgins, now the touch judge is in with the flag, as we see the touch judge coming on the screen now, he's complaining about a trainer I think, or is he complaining about a player to referee Higgins, who's he calling out, he's calling out uh, the trainer, Peter Baz, Peter might have uh, passed some remark I think, is that the ruling? Uh, referee's also talking to Craig Salmon. Well, Inverell claimed the ball had been stripped. Referee didn't see it that way. And the scrum packs and Armadale wins it. McCann across field it goes to uh, the centre three-quarter. And that is Robbie John Griffiths. McCann goes into dummy half. Davidson on the far side. He takes the ball now, the centre. Lightning centre. Passes away to uh, the fullback. That's Benny Edwards. And he's held. Tag it to dummy half. McCann has Waters with him. Gives it to Waters. Waters... Uh, Stumbled a bit, didn't know he was getting the pass, then he took it. They're 32 out, here's another chance for the Greens. They're down by 6-4 as uh, pass is uh, given away to Campbell. Lindsay Snell overran it, he thought he was getting the ball off Connors, but uh, Campbell ended up with it. That's Warren Lund, Connors, McCann across field, what are they setting up? It goes away to the second rower in Andrew McGinn. That's the fifth tackle, has the black bike shorts on to keep those thighs and the hamstrings warm. McCann across field, short line run, comes out on the far side to Edwards, great tackle. Needed to be done out there. Yeah, great defence, Troy Goldman. Hasn't gone, gone much good. He's slowly to his feet too. Shannon Zemmett goes from dummy half. Bit of indecision by Zemmett. Robbo on that occasion. Inverell needs to get some passes together. Now it comes out to David Cook, the fullback. He made a nice break earlier today. He's just outside the 22 metre line and I think he's spilled it. I think he's lost the ball, Greg. His rule knock on. David Cook saying something to him as he got to his feet. Probably something along the lines of that hurt as the crowd looks on. Big grandstand packed here and uh, lots of supporters representing all clubs this afternoon. Glenn Innes winning the reserve grade in Burrell, the junior grand final for 1998. Overcast conditions prevail, although we had a bit of light rain earlier today, but the field's in immaculate condition. As uh, standing out of, from that uh, scrum win is Andrew McGann. It's interesting uh, tactic. That 
uh, Andrew McGann's very good on his feet. He's also very quick in the open, so uh, perhaps I try to exploit uh, Damien Smith from the scrum base. And Campbell's leaving the field now. We didn't think it would be long, so it comes back to Lindsay Snell. And he's 12 out. Well, the Hawks have been under plenty of pressure in the last six or seven minutes. Connors. Connors has a player inside him. He goes to the open side. He tries to get through Darren Pay. Pass it off the uh, ground to Davidson. Then it goes away to Griffiths. Griffiths, the replacement player on this side of the field. That's Brian Quinlan, I think it is. And he's down just inside the quarter line. Brian Quinlan plays at dummy half. Griffiths runs from that position. And he's three metres out from the try line. Here's another chance. They're down 6-4, the Greens. Water, short little pass away to Apthorpe. He one-handed it to him off his hip. That's the fifth tackle. The Hawks... Yeah, trouble to the right here. Trouble to the right. They're going to the left. Quinlan, uh, Davidson. Away it goes to Quinlan. Oh, terrible pass. Went behind Edwards over the try line, over the uh, touch line. Trouble to the right, but they went to the left, Robbo. Yeah, I thought it may have been a poor option, but uh, grand finals, uh, you take uh, what comes your way and perhaps... Uh, as I said, it nerves early on in this game. Uh, uh, certainly, they just need to consolidate both teams who have made yep. mistakes at uh, very vital times attacking the opposition line. We've just seen a shot of the bench. Robbie Griffiths, he's an impact player. He'll come on. He's a regular first grader in re previous years. As they dropped it, now it comes away to Connors. Open player, pass to Taggart. He takes it through. Oh, now he's spilled it. I was just about to give him a fantastic rap, Robbo. And he's, uh, he's dropped the goodies on the far side of the field. Well, Inverell can't do a thing right either. Yeah, first tackle, I, yeah, without trying to be too critical, perhaps uh, it would have been better for Armand just to take the ball uh, forward and uh, look at their options from there. Well, Preston Connors, every time he touches the ball, he's proving to be the real bogeyman for the Hawks. They're leading by six points to four. Let's see what they can do. Smith goes up to the quarter line, and uh, he's 30 metres out, right in front of the uprights. The Hawks challenge the uh, Greens about seven weeks ago for the minor premiership but then they went through I think a five or six week stretch where they didn't win a game the Inverell side and they were ended up fighting for their semi-final life they won the preliminary semi-final the minor semi-final against the Maury Boomerangs uh, they won that quite easily then they defeated Glen Ennis in the final Scott Park takes it up to the uh, 20 metre line inside Armadale territory Peter Stevens, David Walls, Steve Goan has it now Inside pass to McIntyre, there's to McLennan, McLennan a pass away to Kelly, Kelly's back on the field, he gets out of one tackle, he's only three metres short. Craig Sabbath into dummy half, he wants to go to the short line, there's a try on here, a long pass to Park, he'll score himself, yes, got Park! I said he had to stand out to be counted, all he had to do that time was catch the ball, he had a bit of work to do as the defence came across to his credit though, and Scott Park has scored in the corner. And the crowd, uh, the look of the Hawks supporters, uh, they're pretty happy with that try scored by Scott Park. Well, he's got plenty of brilliance about him. As I said earlier, Robbo, he's had a hamstring injury this year, which has probably affected him greatly, maybe even more than we know, but he has been quiet for the Hawks as we have a look at this. A good run by Kelly. Yeah, it's certainly be a uh, confidence booster for Scott Park. You just see here, shorter numbers, Armadale on the left, and uh, despite Jamie Apthorpe coming across in cover, but uh, they were just outgunned. Too many trips in Varel, and uh, once again, they've... Um, uh, taking their points tally further. Yes, in Burrell now lead this uh, grand final by 10 points to four. Now, Peter Stevens from way out, you can see it just on the inside of the screen there. He's only a two or three metres in from touch. <coughs> Left footer he is, Pete. Let's see. He generally tends to hook them. He's hit this one. He's given it a big show, but it's gone to the right of the uprights again. So the scoreline remains in Burrell leading Armadale by 10 points to four. As we see the restart from Gavin Taggart, it's been a wake-up call, Steve Robinson, to this Armadale side this afternoon, who, as I said, have gone into this grand final as uh, very hot favourites. I think most people outside the most uh, devoted Inverell Hawks supporter believe that Armadale will win the Premiership this year. They've been the best team all year, but uh, the Hawks have given them a real wake-up call in this first 20 minutes. Yes, you balance a ledger here, uh, Greg, with the fact that Armadale have had a week off. Uh, Inverell have played consistent football since the semi-final started, and that could be a distinct advantage for Inverell as this game unfolds. I know how important it is. The Inverell Juniors won their match earlier this afternoon. Now here's Craig Salmon spotting a gap of pass it back to Walls. Walls back across field to uh, another player. Then it goes away to the replacement player. Kelly, he's been damaging. He had players out. outside him on mark. It was Troy Goldman, the player I couldn't pick up. Walls at dummy half. Stevens across field. He's got Damien Smith with him. Gives it to Smith. No, he throws the dummy. 10 metre line. Referee ruling a changeover of the sixth tackle. Just going back, the point I made is uh, how important it was to the Inverell first graders that the Inverell juniors won today. 
because I know that they spoke to them after the game and uh, they just got that winning feeling, confidence. It's always a bit of a down. If you've got a couple of teams in and they lose the lower grades, as we saw at, uh, at Warrior Alder a couple of years ago when the Hawks lost all three. Uh, yes, very true, Greg. It does give you a little bit of uh, heart and a bit of uh, courage going to a first-rate grand final when the lower grades have been successful. That's part of what uh, club football is all about. We've just seen a shocking pass from Benny Evans. Bro, Preston Connors must uh, he must go around this team at half-time and introduce himself again because they've thrown him some ordinary passes out there today. As Warren Lunn and Troy Goldman have a little bit of a difference, but they separate quickly. The pass goes past Davidson, away to Damien McCann. McCann drives it deep, David Cook going back. He picks it up nicely inside his quarter. Shannon Zemmett back with him. McCann, he comes up to tag at Cook. Gets away from him, but Benny Edwins does the jo job. About 15 metres short of halfway. Now the ball going across field is Shannon Zemmett. He scored a couple of tries in the minor semi-final. He's almost up to halfway and he's brought down. Peter Stevens, dummy half, short blind. Steve Gawain, he's been in great form. Craig Zemmett looks for Scott Park. Takes it himself. 10 metres inside Armadale territory, but here's a penalty. Armadale was inside the 10. Mind you... He played a long advantage, uh, but he's obviously there was no advantage to Inverell out wide, and he's ruled that the Armadale players were inside the 10 metres. So Inverell has a, a kick as Peter Stevens takes that and finds it too, about to 23 metres out. Walls, McIntyre, uh, St Tim McIntyre, just inside the quarter line. He'll play it. Craig Waters and Scott Park having a bit of a difference of opinion. Now it comes away to Goan. Goan away to Smith. Smith gets through Lund's tackle. Over the top comes Waters. Craig Waters leading by example, trying to fire his side up as Timmy McIntyre leads the field and Jim Stevens comes back on. Now pass comes away to Peter Stevens. Inside it goes to Mick McLennan. He's shouldered to the ground by Lindsay Snell and Andrew McGann. Down he goes, 10 metres out. Stevens dummy half. Away to Jim Stevens, his brother. Throws a loose pass, picked up by McLennan. Throws it back to Kelly. It's anybody's game at the moment. Then it comes away to the replacement player going forward and he's brought down right in front of the uprights. That player is uh, Peter McLaughlin. And a penalty against Armadale for a game. A high tackle on this occasion. I don't know whether we're going to get a replay of that for Grant McCarroll Ford. And uh, the referee just indicating Inverell will take the kick for goal. Rotho will have a look just how high this was. And Peter McLaughlin still going back, shaking his head. The replacement player wearing number 16. And we'll have a look at the tackle. As the ball comes out now to McLaughlin. Yeah, there didn't seem to be too much in it, though, did there? Uh, no, it certainly didn't, but it's a referee's call. He was on the spot closer to us, and uh, he obviously felt it warranted the penalty, and certainly it gives Peter Stevens an opportunity to forge Everell Hawks further ahead in this 1998 grand final. Little Hawks supporter there watching on uh, this afternoon as Peter Stevens from right in front should make it 12 points to four. Craig Waters looked at the referee as if to say, you're kidding, although he didn't, didn't uh, object. He went back to his position because Sinbarrell, of course, could have taken a quick tap. As Stevens raises the flag, so in the grand final, it's 12 points to four in favour of the Inverell Hawks, and the Hawks supporters are pretty happy with things. It's Wagons Ho! at Grant McCarroll Ford Armadale for the used wagon stampede! Just look at this hard-to-find EF Falcon 4-litre 5-speed manual. One local owner and under 44,000 Ks. A 97 4-litre T-Bar Auto Ford Futura with air, power steer, cruise control and ABS. And save thousands on new car price for this Falcon GLI wagon in excellent condition. Yeehaw! Come and lasso a quality used wagon at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale during the Wagon Toll Stampede! Longyard Golf Course presents an exciting demonstration weekend October 3rd and 4th. See the latest clubs including Ping, Callaway and PGF with free access to the driving range. There'll be reps on hand, free admission and clubs will be for sale with discount prices available. Don't be anxious about anything. Instead, let God know about your concerns. Talk to God in the quietness of your spirit with gratitude for what he has given you in the past. If you can do that, you will know a peace that is beyond understanding and your mind and heart will be kept safe and secure. 
Ford Fairlane Gear, the spirit of luxury and refinement, powerful and responsive. A remarkable level of comfort and excellence in engineering. Ford Fairlane Gear, Australia's most distinguished luxury sedan. Now at Grant McCarroll Ford, Armadale. 12 points to four. Well, we've seen two strips in, in a minute or so. Uh, one for each side. And good referee by referee Jason Higgins. He had a quick look at his touch judge, didn't get a call, so he kept on with it. As he passes, comes out to Brian Quinlan. And Quinlan's well marked out there. Good tackle too by Damien Smith. From the blind side goes the centre. I thought the referee might have got Troy Golan for offside there. From Robbie John Griffiths. Now it comes back to Taggart. Taggart almost lost it, almost went without it again. Ball security not the greatest. Robbie Griffiths from dummy half. He's a tough runner. He's going for the try line. He's right on the try line. Referee said you better play it. No, held up. Held up's the decision. We'll have a look at that again. We're a long way from it, of course. Uh, he's not arguing for Grant McCarroll Ford. We'll have a look at the replay. He was held right on the line by the Inverell defence. Craig Salmon there, you notice, just uh, applauding his players for good defence. As um, we'll have a look at this as uh, Robbie Griffiths goes to dummy half. He yeah, streaks back the blind side, Robert Griffiths, who was always on to, and uh, unfortunately the great Inverell defence has held him up, but no disadvantage to Armadale, who now have a set of six attacking the Inverell line, 10 metres out and 20 metres in from touch. Now we notice, uh, I think Marcus Woodbury coming on, I think Peter Ashenden is he going from the field, I think he is, wholesale change, no Ashenden staying on, I'm not sure who's actually has come from the field, but Armadale win it. Connors, away it goes to McGann, who's out in the centres, gets it back to Connors. Connors under the uprights, almost got through the pass away. He's held five metres out. Apthorpe, Campbell, he's got McElroy, cuts out a pass, in, uh, intercepted by Ashland. They won't catch him, he's up over the halfway line, being chased from behind by the, uh, the centre, Robbie Lund Griffiths, but I told you he's quick, Peter Ashland. He's very quick, Taggart coming across, and that's why this fellow's off to Sydney, this junior. A great opportunist try by Peter Ashland, he has run 90 metres, as uh, the centre three-quarter, Robbie John Griffiths tried to put him in the early stages, he couldn't. Gavin Taggart came from the far side of the field, and look at the Inverell supporters, they're pretty happy there. Some local identities uh, giving him plenty of encouragement. Great try, Peter Ashton. He anticipated that out. He's been winded as he went across the try line, but that's a handy break, a break in the grand final by 16 points to four. Have a look at the way he pounces on this, Robbo. Yes, you see the ball had a lot of time in the air. Ashton summed it up very well, took the collect, and uh, showed them a clean set of hurls all the way to the try line, and certainly a... Uh, uh, Certainly a very, very good try for Everell right on half-time, and this will give them a lot of heart. Yeah, the half-time bell going in the background. We'll wait for Peter Stevens to have the kick at 16 points to four in favour of the Hawks. Right on half-time, can Peter Stevens extend it to a 14-point lead? They're leading 16-4, moves in, no problem with that one. It is 18 points to four. The half-time scorers for you, Scott Park scored a try for Inverell, Tim McIntyre and Peter Ashenden have scored tries. Peter Stevens has uh, kicked three goals for the Inverell side as the crowd stand there and some of the Armadale crowd stunned as the Armadale players are as they leave the field. For the Armadale side, just the one scoring opportunity, Gavin Taggart scored the try. At half time, it's 18 points to four. The Inverell Hawks leading the Armadale Greens. It's Wagons Ho at Grant McCarroll Ford Armadale for the used wagon stampede. Ready for work or pleasure, this Ford Futura Auto Wagon with air, steel, OKs, ABS brakes, cargo barrier and price to sell. It's price right. This Auto ED Falcon with air and power steer. A neat and tidy 1990 Toyota Camry 2-litre 5-speed manual with air and steer plus excellent rego. Hard to find automatic Corolla 4x4 wagon with air and steer. Yeehaw! Come and lasso a quality used wagon at Grant McCarroll Ford Armadale during the Wagons Ho Stampede. Don't get all washed up trying to find the right white goods. Go to the New England Wash Shed for quality reconditioned washers, dryers and refrigerators. If you're thinking near new, there's refrigerators and dryers at great prices. For prompt repairs with six months warranty, see the New England Wash Shed, Dean Street, Tamworth. Enrolments for the forthcoming school year are now being accepted by the Catholic school system. Using the latest educational ideas and techniques, we're committed to the success and well-being of all our students. Teaching in a Catholic school provides me with the opportunity to cater for the individual student. Through years of comprehensive training and regular course updates, the Catholic school teaching staff has the expertise to achieve the best possible results for your children. The Catholic school system instills faith in their future. It's time to have your say about the future of Tamworth. 
It's about your children's future and the future of the city. It's about more jobs, modern facilities and community improvement. It's about positive economic growth. There will be a special public meeting at the Town Hall at 7.30 on Tuesday, September the 29th. Have your say about your city's future. Authorised by Vicky Levendell for the Tamworth's Future Now Committee, Tamworth. The Ford Econovan, enduring and popular work vehicles with a gutsy 2-litre engine to easily handle the van's full 1-ton payload. Econovan's impressive turning circle and manoeuvrability makes it the perfect all-round work vehicle. See Ford Econovan at Grant McCarroll Ford, Armadale. The uh, second half of this match, and uh, back to uh, Peter Stevens who takes the kickoff. Steve, what both, uh, what both coaches would have said at half-time? Well, I'm sure Craig Salmon would be very happy with the result at uh, this stage of the game. Uh, they've made a few errors whilst attacking the armour on line, but still going leading at uh, 16, correction, 18 points to four. And I believe that's a significant advantage for uh, Everell, who now have a breeze, which has swung around at their back, and this will uh, certainly be to their favour. Uh, they just need to consolidate, uh, and I'm sure that uh, if they can control the ball and get a good kicking game in order, they'll be very hard to run down this afternoon. From Craig Waters' point of view, well, certainly been disappointed with Armadale's go forward. Uh, they've played very well uh, laterally, but uh, just haven't been able to uh, take the yardage game on Fifarel, and that'd be an area that uh, Craig would certainly would be concentrating on. Steve, we just saw a kick put in downfield by Peter Stevens into this bottom corner uh, to our extreme left as we look at the game. Uh, with the wind advantage, but that is that where you'd be dropping the ball into all day? Yes, that's a corner that in which uh, the ball will roll, and uh, with the breeze coming slightly towards that corner, that uh, would certainly be the uh, tactic I'd be employing with this lead at present. Craig Salmon getting to his feet rather slowly after a tackle back on the halfway line. Doesn't look good, Robbo. He's being taken from the field. He's groggy. And yes, uh, doesn't look well at all, Greg, and uh, this will be a uh, vital blow for Inverell should he uh, stay off the field for any length of time. Peter McLaughlin's replacing him. He's going onto the field right now as Brian Davidson, uh, uh, Gary Davidson, should I say, comes away with it. And now he's dropped it. And uh, the referee just uh, calling, uh, talking to his touch judge, looks across at his touch judge. He indicates that um, the ball has been knocked on. And scrum packing it just inside the quarter line. Well, Peter McLaughlin's gone in. I notice Marcus would be scored at the prop board position. McLaughlin's lock as Inverell wins it. Comes away to Smith. Smith steps inside one. Good tackle. Craig Waters back to David Cook. David Cook right on the line. I think has he got the ball down now? Held up. He's over the try line. There's no problem with that. And good defence from Armadale. They've held him up. But David Cook, he was over the line all right as the crowd on the grandstand looks on. Many Inverell supporters there. And Inverell will get the scrum feed back on the five metre, uh, the uh, ten metre line. And uh, we might have a look at, uh, well, we won't have a look at that again as Inverell quickly had the scrum win. They work a short blindside. Goldman steps off the left foot, away from Connors, away from one a player again. And Waters brings him down. Only three metres out. Pass. Inside it goes to Mick McLennan. Runs into his own player, Goldman. Out of the way, he says. A couple out. Goldman throws a blindside, uh, throws a, uh, a dummy. Peter McLaughlin wished he had because he got bowled over on suspicion. Stevens, short pass away, it goes to Smith. Stevens goes around him. Smith near the uprights. He's trying to bullock his way over. It's still 18-4 and the Hawks, the, the bolters in this competition or in this game, are in front. Marcus Woodbury, dummy half. On the bounce to Peter Stevens. Pass away to Scott Park. Intercepted and knocked on on the far side by Shannon Trindle. And Inverell gets yet another scrum feed. Yes, they're keeping the pressure on here, Inverell, and uh, certainly this is a very important stage of the game for them if they can score next in this grand final with a lead of 16 points. Well, you'll have to think they'd be very hard to beat. Scrum packing. Inverell have another chance at them. Damien Smith runs straight at them, pushes one player out of the way. That was Robbie John Griffiths. But Craig Waters, he's really standing up in defence. Now from dummy half, David Cook, he's going to bury over this time. I think he's got the ball down. The Inverell players go up. The referee gets, uh, says again, no. He's not. He'll order him to play it. They're short this side, Armadale. If Inverell can swing it, it comes back to uh, McLaughlin. And McLaughlin's held. They're about four on two out on the blind side if Inverell can swing it. Now here's a penalty against Warren Lunn. And uh, he uh, has plenty to say to Peter McLaughlin. This will be a penalty, I would imagine, to Inverell right in front. And I'd take the kick, Robbo, if that be the case. <coughs> you would have to take the kick. He's got ten. Craig Waters says, Warren, you've done enough to finish. Let me handle this. Off you go. And will he fight up a moment ago with McLennan? Craig Waters now saying to Jason Higgins as Warren Lund leaves the field and the crowd looks on. Craig Waters is now telling the referee 
you've got to be uh, rule and referee both sides. I think that's what he's telling him anyway, knowing Craig. I think there's a fair bit of frustration out there on the Armadale side, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, they've failed to go forward, and there seems to be a lack of desperation in their defence at this point of time, and they just need to consolidate, they need to settle down, and they just need to get their minds on the job. Meanwhile, Inverell, full credit to them, they've taken the game to Armadale, and they certainly deserve this uh, commanding lead, which they have at present. It's a 14-point lead, Pete Stevens hopes to make it 16. Now, Peter Stevens. I was talking to him uh, this morning and uh, he was very confident. He said he's never seen an Inverell team so psyched up this week. They just wanted to talk about premierships. Left foots it. He adds a further two points. That makes the score 20 points to four in favour of the Inverell Hawks. Peter Stevens, the goal kicker. Craig Salmon gives him a pat in the back. So Salmon's back on as the Inverell bench looks on. Peter Ashenden, uh, Peter McLaughlin, the strapper there, also uh, Kerry Stafford. Uh, they know that Armidale can come back, so they're not uh, on too good a terms with themselves, but they're happy with the lead, and the scoreline is 20 points to four. From the restart of play, the ball goes back to Peter Stevens, who takes it nicely. That's Marcus Woodbury going ahead, runs into Craig Waters. I think, Robbo, you hit the nail on the head. It's frustration with, uh, with Craig Waters. He's, uh, he's looking to try and stimulate this side. He's done a lot of tackling, but things just haven't come to, uh, come to fruition for them today. Uh, that's correct. Uh, both captain coaches, uh, grand final situations, must take control and uh, set all the younger players down. As we saw your break by uh, Scott Park. Scott Park stood up to be counted, got over the halfway line, 10 metres into Armadale Territory. Craig Seven, Crossfield, David Walls. Walls has Smith with him. Smith gives it away to Goldman. Goldman away to Zemmett. Zemmett downfield. Kicks downfield. Taken out after he kicked it, but that was fair enough. It's dived on back there by, uh, might be Benny Edwards, the fullback, who saved the day for the Greens. But in Burrell, gee, finding some holes out wide. McCann into dummy half. Away it goes to Dave Campbell. Campbell hasn't had the effect today that, uh, that he has had in previous matches. No, he certainly hasn't had the impact, Greg. And uh, as I note now that Craig Salmon's back out on the field and uh, this is uh, certainly an advantage for the Inverell side to have the captain coach leading the charge. 20 to 4, the Hawks in front. Well, as I said, Robbo, they weren't supposed to be here and they certainly weren't supposed to win if they, that be the case, the Hawks. But gee whiz, aren't they giving their supporters a big sight? And they're playing full of confidence. Preston Connors takes the tap, runs forward. Referee says you're offside, still the Hawks. Irrespective of what you do throughout the year, Greg, when it comes to grand final, of football, it just comes down to who makes the loose mistakes, who can take control of the game and who can dominate in possession and certainly Everell, as I said earlier, full credit to them. They've taken the game to the favourites and uh, they've given them an almighty scare. Well, I don't want to put the mocker on them too early as we see an error taken by Armadale as he really has lost the ball. He didn't put the ball on the ground for the tap. Dave Campbell's disgusted. He said, I'm going home and I'm going to take the ball with me. So No, I'll better leave it for the, for the players to play with. So Dave's leaving the field, Craig McElroy comes on, Jim Stevens comes on for the Inverell Hawks. Well, the Hawks haven't won a grand final in first grade, as we have a look at the bench for them, since 1975, a 23-year drought. Well, they'll certainly celebrate long and hard if they can get the result today, but they've been beaten in their past too, and uh, they'd be hungry for success, and uh, if they continue in this vein, the way they've played this game, they'll be very hard to beat. Craig Salmon out wide. He'll be uh, very happy at the present time. We just saw David Cook make a good run. David Cook epitomises the spirit. He, uh, he retired last year. He went down to watch a reserve grade match for Inverell this year. They were very short of players and some juniors have to back up and play again. And he said, I can't have this, the kids playing. So he got the boots out of the cupboard, dusted them off. As we see uh, Scott Park in a gap up to the 10 metre line. Gives it a pass out further to the winger on the far side, Glenn Partridge. And Partridge is taken to the ground in a great tackle across here. From dummy half, Walls, away to Scott Park, looking for try number two. He's right on the try line. It'll be the death knell, I think, of Armadale if they manage to get across here, the Hawks. They work a short fly, long pass intercepted. And the ball thrown back in field by the Armadale player. That was, was that Quinlan intercepted across there, Steve? Uh, it appears to be Shannon Trendle. OK, but the referee ruled that it's been knocked on anyway. So a bit of scrappy play. The referee Jason Higgins ruling Timmy McIntyre's down injured. We'll have a look at that in a moment as Marcus Woodbury is about to come on, being spoken to by um, John Dawson, the Inverell trainer. Here's Timmy McIntyre with, uh, with the two Inverell trainers being taken from the field. Uh, he was hitting a tackle a moment ago. 
He's, he's had a very good game today, Timmy McIntyre. He's uh, really impressed me. Now, here's the intercept taken out wide. Yes, it was your right. Yeah, Shannon Trennell, inside wall. And the referee rules the knock on, Jimmy Stevens and uh, brother Peter. As we see uh, 17, Adam Kelly going back on for the Inverell side. Timmy McIntyre leaves the field. Does Inverell have it? David Cook have it. Has it now. Yeah, David Cook is getting back to that story just to finish that. So he did get the boots out and come back and play in reserve grade. And he found himself in A grade. As it comes out to Mick McLennan, one hand's a pass away to Goldman. Goldman for the line. Over the top is Waters. Gee, he's done some tackling Craig Waters. Walls the dummy half. Pass Smith. Smith. Stevens with it. Cross field. Salmon. Park. Try. Try time. Partridge. He's in. I'd say that's the grand final for 1998. The Inverell Hawks 24 leading Armadale 4. Yes, they've uh, certainly outnumbered Armadale on the right here this afternoon. That exchange of passing by the Inverell side. If we just go back to the replay for Grant McCarroll Ford. And the Inverell bench, uh, Peter McLaughlin there. We'll have a look at the replay right now. This is excellent ball movement. And this is what Armadale's been trying to do all day, but it hasn't come off for the Greens. It is for the Hawks. As you see the ball across the line, Damien Smith, wide ball out to Stevens, again onto the replacement play into the Scott Park and just simply ball in the hand, great lateral movement and a great finish in the corner there to Glenn Partridge. Now have a look at the jubilation on Craig Salmon and Peter Stevens. So the two senior players on the team, Stevens and the Salmon, I know Peter Stevens came back only through halfway through the season from the Gold Coast to play with the Hawks, and I know his experience. They needed a forward leader, uh, and he fitted in that role beautifully for Craig Salmon. His experience, as you mentioned, Steve, and you, you can see how he controls the play around the ruck, and you can see the jubilation, the absolute ecstasy of those two as they embrace there with that try. Yes, well, Peter has uh, got a tremendous amount of experience. Uh, he's officially known as Rolls, and uh, by the look of him, you can pick that out. But one thing about uh, Peter, when... Uh... Now, well, let's have a look at this kick. It's Damien Smith misses. He's taken over the goal kicking from Peter Stevens. So the scoreline is Inverell 24, leading Armadale 4 in the Group 19 Grand Final. It's Wagons Ho at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale for the used wagon stampede. Just look at this hard-to-find EF Falcon 4-litre 5-speed manual. One local owner and under 44,000 Ks. A 97 4-litre T-Bar Auto Ford Futura with air, power steer, cruise control and ABS. And save thousands on new car price for this Falcon GLI wagon in excellent condition. Yeehaw! Come and buy some quality used wagon at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale during the Wagons Ho Stampede. Beat the price rise on dry clad above ground pools at Country Rubber and Foam Tamworth. Dry clad has long been acknowledged as Australia's best value pool. Built from quality components for strength and durability as well as safety and good looks. Six months interest free terms are available on all dry clad pools with a free Barracuda Auto Pool Cleaner with any dry clad pool sold during the month of September. A saving of up to $1,500. Also get 10% off all pool chemicals when you purchase a dry clad above ground pool only at Country Rubber and Foam Tamworth. Namoy Valley Implements introduces the versatile honeybee cutting deck with improved technology. It's gentle on the crop, reducing loss and delivering greater productivity. Greater capacity is achieved with very even crop feed to the threshing mechanism and the fully sprung suspended front with casters provides low ground contour cutting. Flexibility is the key with a direct crop or wind growing capability and honeybee is compatible to most headers, New Holland and John Deere wind growers and bi-directional tractors. Talk to Namoy Valley Implements today about honeybee. The Serendipity Apex Club of Tamworth Billy Cart Derby will be held Sunday 18th of October at Macquarie Street, Tamworth from 10am to 4pm. It'll be fantastic with all funds raised to benefit children whose parents are suffering from cancer. Get your cart ready now for the Serendipity Billy Cart Derby. It's an inspiration by design. Ford Taurus gear ready to test drive at Grant McCarroll Ford. Setting new standards in design and craftsmanship. Taurus gear, safe, quiet and responsive. Ford Taurus gear, dynamic, luxurious, innovative at Grant McCarroll Ford Armadale. The year's biggest sporting event is here, the 1998 NRL Grand Final. How good is that? Live from midday, complete coverage of both grades. Parramatta and Canterbury in the President's Cup Grand Final. Oh! Then at 3 o'clock live and commercial free, the ultimate first grade confrontation when the Canterbury Bulldogs and the Brisbane Broncos clash. Jimmy Barnes performs as Rugby League celebrates the Grand Final. Live from midday Sunday only on NBN.
Well, we see the restart of play. The Armadale's uh, fans are uh, starting to file out of the ground. They've given their team up. They're too good a side to give up, but Steve, by the same token, they are not playing well enough to get back into the game. It would appear not. They certainly haven't dominated play for credit to Inverell. They've just uh, taken the opportunities that have come their way. And with this breeze behind them and the position they are in in the scoreboard, it would be uh, a tragedy if they were beaten. Now, we've seen referee indicating he didn't play the ball properly. Um, I'm not sure that was Craig Salmon. He's just querying in the decision. But referee Jason Higgins gives a penalty in the play of the ball, which is a cardinal sin by a team in possession. And uh, McCann takes the kick for touch and finds it on the quarter line. Well, they need to score now, Armadale. 24 points to four is the score line. As we see Apthorpe taking the tap, he'll give it to Lindsay Snell and the black head gear charges ahead and uh, Stevens over the top and his brother Pete, uh, brother Jim there, Jim and Pete Stevens. Now it comes away to McElroy. McElroy wearing those uh, blue bike pants that um, keeps the thighs warm as I said earlier. Preston Connors, away it goes to McCann. McCann off the ground to Waters, got away with it. Steps off the right foot, Craig Waters, gets a short pass away. Oh, it's been spilled again. Referee said six to go. It's obviously come off in Perel. As we saw an Armadale player reach over to score. Now, what's he going to rule here? He's put the ball down. Robert Griffiths indicating to referee Jason Higgins what should happen, and he's still indicating to him. He's ruled a knock on Jason Higgins. I think it all happened just too quick for him. We'll have a look at the replay for Grant McCarroll Ford. Robert, you might, uh, might take us through it. He yeah, certainly didn't think the first ball... Uh was knocked on from Armadale, but maybe the second phase play may be where it broke down. That's certainly off Inverell. Uh, yeah. It's Armadale's ball. He's got up. Now, we just can't see from our, from our I angle think he's here, ruled. I think his rule should have been played. Played the ball, maybe. Anyway, back to the action. As we see the ball going loose from the Inverell side. Davidson, across it goes to McGann. McGann in a gap. Smith coming across in cover. McGann's got plenty of pace. Gets a pass away on the far side. And the Rosetta has scored. The Rosetta has scored in Robbie John Griffiths. Number three out there has scored the try for Armadale. And uh, Inverell losing the ball back on the halfway line. And that makes it 24 points to wait as Andrew McGann had lots of pace. Uh, and that brings Armadale back to the game somewhat. The kick would be handy from out wide for the Armadale side to get uh, right back into it. They're down by 24 points to eight at the present time. That was an interesting decision a moment ago. Um, the referee indicating that he thought uh, maybe it should have been played. Anyway, Inverell lost the ball there to Mick McLennan and Robbo. Yes, and you see Andrew McGann showing a clean pair of heels here. He's done very well here to offload. Out wide there to Robbie John Griffiths. And at this point of 1998, it's the most important try that Armadale could have scored, given that they needed to score next to remain in this game. Now, Gavin Taggart from out wide, as we see... Mick McLennan leaving the field for the Hawks. NBN Television, of course, and uh, particularly the NBN Sport bringing you rugby league. As Taggart hits it, he's given it a big show, but it's gone across the goal mouth. No goal. So the scoreline is Inverell 24, leading Armadale 8. It's Wagons Ho at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale for the used wagon stampede. Ready for work or pleasure, this Ford Futura Auto Wagon with air, steer, low case, ABS brake, cargo barrier and price to sell. It's price right. This Auto ED Falcon with air and power steer. A neat and tidy 1990 Toyota Camry 2.0-litre 5-speed manual with air and steer plus excellent rego. Hard to find automatic Corolla 4x4 wagon with air and steer. Yeehaw! Come and lasso a quality used wagon at Grand McCarroll Ford Armadale during the Wagons Ho Stampede. It's time to have your say about the future of Tamworth. It's about your children's future and the future of the city. It's about more jobs, modern facilities and community improvement. It's about positive economic growth. There will be a special public meeting at the Town Hall at 7.30 on Tuesday, September the 29th. Have your say about your city's future. Authorised by Vicky Levendell for the Tamworth's Future Now Committee, Tamworth. Does your transmission need a good tune? Then contact Tamworth Automatic Transmission Services, the automatic specialists. ATS provide exchange transmissions, full automatic transmission repairs and servicing, plus they stock a comprehensive range of auto transmission parts, oil coolers and torque converters. ATS Tamworth is one of the largest transmission specialists outside Sydney. And they've been playing your tune for over 30 years. Authentic pepperoni, ham, cabanossi, beef and bacon. It's all on the Pizza Haven Meat Supreme.
performance, reliability and value. Ford Laser started it all. Good looking laser now at Grant McCarroll Ford. It's the right size vehicle with original qualities in abundance in today's up to the minute edition. See laser at Grant McCarroll Ford Armadale. Damien Smith, the restart player. Now the Armadale supporters finding voice. They know their side can score tries. They just proved that as it comes back to Robbie Griffiths. He runs straight at Peter Stevens, tries to run over the top of him like a thief in the night. And he's brought down over the corner line. Dummy half afterward. Amazing what a try does for the confidence. They're all full of running at the present time. The midway half and quarter. Armadale, they've made 30 metres in three. That's Snell taking it up once again. Apthorpe into dummy half, gives it, no, he's almost gave it to Preston Connors, but he gave it away to McCann, now he gives it to Waters, Waters through Walls, tackle, across his uh, salmon, he's kicked the ball forward, or thrown the ball forward, he's now kicked by another Armadale player, Craig again remonstrating with the referee, but uh, I think he lost that firm and square. Yeah, he definitely lost that ball forward and a fair call by the referee. I think uh, Craig Waters is trying to convince the referee that it came off Craig Salmon, but uh, it's obvious to everybody it appears that uh, he did lose the ball fair and square. Doesn't hurt to ask a question, Greg. No, indeed, Steve. You've got to uh, got to make them earn their money this afternoon, haven't you? On halfway, dummy half is David Cook. Kelly Crossfield, Adam Kelly's been a good bench player. Inverell bench today is probably as strong as it's been all year. Dave Cook from dummy half. Davidson brings him down. 32 metres out. They're leading by 24 to wait the Hawks. And a penalty again against Inverell on the play of the ball again. This time it's holding the marker. And a look of anguish on David Cook's uh, face. Well, that's two penalties that the Hawks have given away in play the ball situations. And uh, if you want to start letting the opposition back into the game, that's what you do. We'll see the second tap from Taggart. Going ahead is Snell. And uh, he's met just inside in Burrell's territory. Now it goes to McElroy. McElroy crossfield, go in, tackler. One hand's a pass away to McCann. McCann up the centre. Inverell thought uh, McElroy was tackled. They were positioning themselves for the next play of the ball and they turned around with shock to see McCann running at them. Now here's Connors crossfield. Way it goes to McGann. Oh, good tackle, Steve. Go in. Underneath, that stopped him in his tracks. McCann with it. Now pass comes away to the replacement player, Quinlan. Quinlan grabbed by Kelly. Kelly and Smith, he's still going, Quinlan. Very strong. He's eight out from the try line. The referee indicating, get back. Davidson from dummy half. Almost there. He's only a metre out. That's the fifth on them, though. Greens. Robbie Griffiths kicks it through on the play of the ball. Dived on by Inverell back there. David Cook has it. And he's held right on the try line. And the referee now ruling knock on. He's got a call from his touch judge, obviously, because he wasn't going to. He's ruled a knock on against David Cook. Yes, uh, just have a look at this on the replay, Greg. It did appear that uh, the ball was knocked forward. Yeah, David Cook, uh, the referee, wasn't going to rule it, was he? And he got uh, got a call from his touch judge. Let's yes. have a look at this. What was that knock on? Yeah, it's hard to see whether the ball was propelled forward, but uh, having said that, uh, Armadale on the attack. Back to live action now, as it's uh, Armadale, only eight metres out from the try line. 24 points to eight there down. And what's the decision here? I think he's knocked it on. Now he's knocked it on the pluck in the uh, tackle. Well, we've seen plenty of that this afternoon. And that was Brian Quinlan on that occasion, knocking the ball on. So, another scrumble pack. Wholesale changes made by both sides as uh, it gets very windy here at Rugby League Park. The green supporters wondering if their side can come back. David Walls dives on it from the scrum base. Difficult to see it's Robbo, isn't it, now? Uh, Armadale, they're making too many basic errors. They're just unthreading the ball with respect. Uh, Inverell uh, hanging on. They've got a, a handy lead but uh, they can't go to sleep either. Yes, they've wound right in the favourites here in Varel. High shot on David Cook, goes unnoticed. Dummy half, that's Pete Stevens. pushes one play on the way, Scott Park in a big hole, the big centre, look at the pace of him. He's got Partridge coming inside, can Partridge keep up? Gives it back to Partridge, but Robbie Griffiths brings him down on the 32 metre line. Well, uh, Scott Park really has made a, an impact on this game. Woodbury, they're a lined out out here. Comes to Salmon. Salmon to Goldman. He's got Kelly with him. He's also got Salmon. Throws it back inside to Kelly. Adam Kelly, oh, he's held five metres out. Good tackle, too, by Taggart. 
Woodbury, dummy half. He could have went blind. He gives it to Salmon. Salmon goes blind. Get to Zemmett. Zemmett still going. Fifth tackle back. It goes behind. Picked up by McCann. Oh, they've butchered it. Try the Hawks. They had three players out marked on the blind side. Oh, big tackle on Davidson by Coleman. It's happening everywhere. Smith across field of 5'8". He's got Park with him. He comes to the tackle. Park goes through in the gap, but Smith takes the tackle. Good passage of play by both sides. From dummy half, Dave Cook. He's got uh, Park with him, but he takes the tackle, David Cook. A try was on here a moment ago. They went the wrong way in Burrell. Scott Park from dummy half. Oh, back to Cook, and he drops it. Wasn't expecting it from the pass. Well, a good passage of play. What a tackle on uh, Gary Davidson by Troy Goldman. Yeah, Troy Goldman, he's known for his speed and his try scoring ability, but he's certainly come up with the goods in defence on that occasion. Yeah, great tackle. <laughs> He certainly uh, spilt the ball quickly, Davidson. As Armadale have the scrum win. That's Connors across field. As Armadale bring the ball away. That's the Shannon Trindle with that plays the ball now to Robbie Griffiths. Griffiths is always full of uh, full of, uh, of venom, is Griffiths. Very strong runner with the ball. Comes back to Damien McCann trying to uh, take the forwards on, but uh, they're a bit Robinson Crusoe there at the moment. There's not much action happening in these Armadale forwards. Big Davy Campbell out wide. They seem to have had his measure today. They've bowled him over a couple of times underneath, and that's what's had to be done. He got away with it uh, for the last couple of seasons, but Inverell have shut him down today. That's McGann, steps out of a couple. He had Quinlan coming in his inside, but uh, too many defenders in between he and uh, Quinlan. That's tackle five. Connors over the top of Smith. Cherry McIntyre, Timmy McIntyre goes back, and he takes it in the air and is taken to the ground. 15 inside in Burrell's territory. From dummy half, Dave Cook just scurries away a couple of metres. That's all they need to do, but they've got to have ball security. The pass comes away to McLennan. Almost was forward. It was forward. Now the referee looks at his touch judge. McLennan gave himself away. Well, he had to reach back for that. He overran the pass. The pass was a little bit behind him. And basic error is now creeping in, particularly to the Inverell game. We've seen a couple of uh, play the ball penalties. Uh, forward pass there from the dummy half. And they're probably not threading this lead as we see uh, Marcus Woodbury coming from the field with the respect it deserves. That's Brian Quinlan with it from the scrub win. He's 10 metres inside in Burrell territory. Difficult player to bring down. 24 rate, but he'll need to do something special to get the greens out of his hole that they're in. McElroy throws it back to Waters. Waters goes to blind side. There's nobody out there at all. And Waters is held. Davidson standing out wide lurking, but it comes to uh, Lindsay Snell. And Snell is down. 15 out from the try line. Back to Connors. Connors short pass away to Campbell. Dave Campbell straight ahead. And uh, they bury him 10 metres out. Referee getting in for L back. Griffiths, Robbie from dummy half. Runs at the defence out of Kelly's tackle. Grabbed there by Goen. That's the fifth tackle. Armadale there right on the attack now. Fifth tackle. Waters crossfield. Throws a little pass to Snell. And a magnificent covering tackle by Craig Salmon. As Snell got it, Salmon hit him in a blinder. And uh, that muffed that, uh, any chances that Armadale had out there. Well, they threw everything at him, Steve. Yes, I had their chances there, Armadale, and they just couldn't put the ball in the hole, and uh, Everell, consequently, are now on the attack. They tried everything, Armadale. Um, that flow just isn't there in that back line. Now, Inverell rucking the ball away. Stevens, away it goes to uh, Mick McLennan. Out wide, he's been strong. In the, in, in the final series, Mick McLennan. Dummy half is Shannon Zemmett. Zemmett up to the 10 metre line. And McElroy brings him to ground. Conditions getting cool, very cool here at Rugby League Park. David Walls, the, ho the uh, halfback, plays a bit of hooker as well. And he's buried to the ground by Lindsay Snell. That's the fifth tackle. Peter Stevens wants it blind. He's going to drop it into this corner. Going back for it uh, as uh, the winger, uh, Taggart. But Taggart is uh, letting it bounce over the touch line. And uh, the players watching this, uh, and the spectators, should I say, watching the game here. And uh, they've been enthralled by a pretty good Hawks performance here this afternoon. They're leading by 24 points to eight. Yes, they've been completely dominant and good tactics here by Peter Stevens, just tricking the ball down over the touchline to give his players a bit of a spell and to keep Armadale down in their quarter and uh, to dominate the yardage game. I noticed that Craig Simmons come from the field, Steve, just having a, a breather and Peter McLaughlin's gone into the lock forward position. <laughs> Yes, so. well, certainly Inverell will lack nothing with Peter Stevens running the show. He's been very dominant there today, and he will take charge and he'll settle the uh, uh, the situation down and keep Inverell, Inverell on a roll. Well, uh, the Hawks have scored this afternoon four tries to two, uh, but uh, they have been the better side except for the opening maybe ten minutes when Armadale had all possession. 
and right on halfway, McElroy Holton. Leninus won the reserve grade grand final. Inverell took out the juniors, and they're looking for the double here. Juniors in the first grade uh, in the 1998 Group 19 series. As from dummy half, we see Preston Connors. He's dynamite. If he sees a half break, they bring him down. He was looking for support. That's the fifth tackle just outside the quarter line in centre field. Craig Waters, cross field it goes now to Lund. Lund chips and chases. Game back for the ball is Peter Ashton, who's on as a replacement for the Hawks. Lund says come here. He takes him forward and like a steer. Now he's lost the ball in a one-on-one -on -one strip. And uh, now he's ruling against Lund, I think, is he? Yes, I think uh, Everell very hardly done by there. Although... No, he's, just, they're getting the feed, Robert. No, he's called yeah. the feed. That's yeah. a that's a fair call. Lund did the right job. He, he stripped the ball, but then he knocked it on. As we see uh, another replacement coming. McGann coming on. And McElroy leaving the field. So Peter Ration at the back. Dave Cook must have left the field uh, for the uh, for the Inverell club. Walls will feed it into the scrum. 24 points to eight. Inverell leading in this uh, grand final. They've scored a try a piece, and now the ball's been lost by Zammet. Well, it's mistake after mistake. It's a real mistake I've gone out there at uh, at the present time. 22 metres out. We wouldn't be all that far, I would think, off uh, off full time. Now Robbie Griffiths with it. Throws it inside to uh, Robbie John Griffiths. And uh, he's held on the 22 metre line. Gary Davidson picks it up off his boot laces. McGann across field. Has Quinlan with him. Takes the tackle himself. The Hawks are tackling better. There's no risk about that of the two sides. They seem keener to win this premiership. As a pass comes out to Campbell out wide. McIntyre over the top. Stevens underneath. Big advantage played by referee Higgins again. And he's got him Brill out wide as they take a quick tap. Davy Campbell charges at the defence like a rhino. He's brought down a couple of metres short. McCann will get into the dummy half. Now Jason Higgins is calling out Scott Park for some reason. What's he calling him for? Can you read sign language uh, or lip language? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think he's got him from an elbow here, uh, the referee, and he's been dismissed from the field for 10 minutes. Well, Scott Park, as the Arbidale players, uh, Arbidale supporters tell him where to go, they're saying that way, Scott, into the sheds. You've got 10 minutes. Now, as uh, the ball comes across field of Waters, when I say, can you read lip language, Steve? We didn't need to. The referee gave us the indication it was an elbow or a, a forearm at least. Now Davidson across field. He's been out of sorts today. Now it comes away to Robbie John Griffiths, and he's very close to that try line, about four metres away. Inferell under pressure from the Greens. They're down 24 8, the competition favourites. Upthorpe goes from that position, only five metres out. Robbie Griffiths to dummy half. The support play hasn't been there for the Greens. Connors across field, gives it away to McCann. Pass away to big Dave Campbell. Out to Quinlan. Long pass. Here's a try coming up to Trindall. No forward. Uh, forward. Forward pass. That last pass coming across to uh, Shannon Trindle. We might have a look at that on replay if we possibly can as Inverell will get the scrum win. And uh, the Alvarez supporters just wondering what they can do right as the scrum's about to pack. Peter Stevens just indicating uh, to the referees. We have a look at the replay here, Steve. Yes, David Campbell did very well here to stand in the tackle and offload and unfortunately that last pass coming across the field by Quinlan had judged to be forward and uh, Inverell will now have the scrum field and they are on the attack. Live action again as Inverell playing with a man short at the present time. Shannon Zemmett holds onto it this time. And Scott Parks in the bin for using a forearm and a tackle. He's already scored to one try now. Mick McLennan's dropped it again. Davy Campbell can't pick it up. And the game's degenerated somewhat. 24 points to eight. The Hawks have their commanding lead. Lindsay still has it. 15 metres inside him. Oh, this is terrible football. As Craig Salmon comes through, he was never on side. Referee Higgins said, you've got to be a straight marker. Yeah, Peter Stevens, I think, of that uh, occasion, uh, never square and uh, paid the penalty. So they take a tap, Armadale. Well, they've been here for a while, Robbo. They just can't get across the line. Uh, full credit to Inverell. They've been hungry in defence, and uh, they've shown they've really wanted success this afternoon, and it, uh, it's been a tremendous effort by them. Apthorpe, first receiver, charges into the defence and is brought down. Adam, Adam McLaughlin in the wars again, as we see Snell going forward. 20 metres out from the try line. The trainers run on to Peter McLaughlin. Dave Campbell. Dave Campbell running at Damien Smith. Good tackle. That's what has to be done to the big fellow. One leg. He only could get around one leg. They're that big. He managed to bring him down and halt his progress. Connors. Connors across field. Runs to Goanne. Goanne, the big fellow, monsters him to the ground. 
field just inside the quarter line. Now there's a player, Peter McLaughlin, coming from the field with our trainers. He's early groggy as Pete. And the ball has been knocked on in the play of the ball. Well, there's been plenty of mistakes in this second half from both sides, and the intensity's gone out of the game. Yes, it's certainly uh, dwindled a lot uh, in intensity, Greg, and uh, you can't help feeling that uh, the Armour side look very, very tight, and perhaps a week off uh, may not have done them any favours at all. As I said, Embryol have not won a grand final since 1975. There are many supporters here this afternoon who haven't seen them win a grand final in first grade uh, at all. Uh, some of the older supporters, of course, uh, would have been around in 75, but the Hawks seem on their way to winning this one. But it'll certainly been worth the wait. They'll, uh, they'll certainly enjoy this success. Mind you, during the week, there were plenty asking, will they ever see one? As Embryol now dropped the ball through Shannon Zimmett, and another mistake sees another scrub. I just noticed Craig Waters, uh, the Armadale captain coach, the lock forward. Um, he looks totally disinterested to me. He's packing, I think, into the second row. Uh, he, when Embryol dropped the ball, Craig looked at the ground as if to say, when's this going to all stop? Connors wins the scrum. I'm sure he hasn't given up, but uh, nothing seems to be going right for either side at the moment. That's Quinlan taking it across field. About 15 metres inside the Hawks' territory. Connors, pass away it goes to uh, McCann, Damien McCann, prolific uh, a goal kicker. Kevin Taggart, of course, has the responsibilities for the Armadale side as Waters looked inside for Campbell. Now the ball's gone missing. Picked up uh, back here eventually by McCann, uh, by uh, Benny Edwards on this occasion. Taggart, Taggart to Davidson, back it goes to McCann. McCann held, he's 24 metres out. Ball's going to be played, going from dummy half is uh, Apthorpe, and Apthorpe's up, that's... Um, Jamie Apthorpe, right in front of the uprights, Connors, away it goes to McGann, straight ahead, underneath McIntyre, pass thrown anywhere, picked up by McCann, fifth tackle on them, Edwards, away it goes to Taggart, Taggart tries to wrong foot the defence, comes back inside, gives it back to Still, referee still has his hand in the air, Damien Smith takes the uh, intercept, but he hasn't got the legs, he's flung to the ground and over the top comes Taggart. 15 metres on the Inverell side of halfway, I don't know the second tackle from Taggart was really needed, there's been no action taken. I'd like to have a look at that again because Damien Smith is down. Uh, he certainly hurt Damien Smith's back and uh, I wouldn't mind having a look at uh, the replay for Grant McCarroll forward, Robbo. I don't know that it was necessary. No, I tend to agree. The only uh, thing going through the mind probably of Gavin Taggart was Damien going to get up and run again. He wasn't held. Um, but, but yes, I do agree. He certainly shouldn't have gone on with that. He shouldn't have let play go on because uh, the player, Tim McIntyre, almost stumbled over the injured player, Damien Smith, on the ground just then. He shouldn't have let that play continue. Anyway, we're back live, right on halfway. Peter Stevens. Away it goes to Craig Salmon, the captain coach of the Hawks. Had uh, a couple of seasons with St George and Souths in the lower grades. Played in a uh, President's Cup Grand Final in, in Sydney years ago. That's Adam Kelly with it now. That's the fifth tackle. What are the Hawks going to do? Run or chip? They're going to put it high in the air on this occasion. Coming through his goal, and so is Zemmett. Eyes on the ball. Oh, well taken back there by Gavin Taggart. And uh, the ball is uh, with him right on the Armadale try line. Never took his eyes off the ball, the winger. Dummy half there. Quinlan runs at the Inverell defence, which has been, for most part of the day, impregnable. Yes, they've been very hungry, as I said earlier, in defence... Uh... Inverell and they've certainly showed what desperation is needed to win a grand final. Robbo, if you'd have walked into the ground today knowing nothing about either side, you would have thought Inverell were the minor premiers, wouldn't you? And, and Armadale's was the side that had won its way through. Well, as I said earlier, in the psychology of sport, it comes down to who wants most on the day and who's prepared to work hard for it. And this is where we give full credit to the Inverell side. Now, Connors with a crossfield touch by Inverell player Walls. Going back, Benny Edwards picks it up. It should be six to go, I feel. The referee has a signal that way as it comes out to McGann. McGann's tried hard all day, to his credit. And Shannon Zemmett brings him down. Just in from touch. And dummy half is Trindle. Trindle running upfield. Grabbed by David Cook and brought to the ground. Our commentary positions atop the grandstand here at uh, Rugby League Park at Armadale. A magnificent view of this ground. As the pass goes inside beautifully, there's Brian Quinlan. Brian Quinlan's got a birthday. Uh, Griffiths with him, and Griffiths will score his second try for the Armadale side. Robbie John Griffith. Whether it's too little, too late, I'm not quite sure. But a nice break made in the first instance by Brian Quinlan, who went through a gap. And Griffiths has scored under the uprights to make it 24 points to 12. As we're going to have a look at the replay, but the Hawks just opened up for one of the rare occasions in this match and we'll have a look at this for Grant McCarroll for the replay. 
Yes, Preston Connors inside to uh, Brian Quinlan. Drew the fullback, and here we go with Robbie John Griffiths under the post. Try converted, and Armadale showing uh, signs of a fight to the death. 24 points to 14 is the scoreline. If it's not Hannaford's, I'm not going. We have the coaches, holiday packages and staff to do the job right. Join Hannaford's on their Rock and Reef Coach Tour. See the best of Australia's Red Centre. Cruise the Catherine Gorge and snorkel the Outer Barrier Reef. Catch the spirit of Tasmania in autumn. Travel in luxury on this 14-day tour. Includes Queenstown, Hobart and historic Port Arthur. We're a family-owned and operated company offering great variety for your next holiday. Hannaford. Always value for money. Soundies Retrovision and Sony announced the launch of Sony Car Audio in Tamworth. Unique technology featuring Rotary Safety Commander for increased road safety and D-Base for massive base response. Introductory specials include a 10 stacker CD with Radio Tutor for $699 or Sony CD Tuner, great value at $349. Professional insulation at the right price too. Sony Car Audio from Soundies Retrovision, Tamworth. It's Chalor's Fashion Centre of Tamworth for the latest range of top brand children's wear. Dress your children in comfort and style with all the latest bright colours from Chalor's Summer Collection. Fred Bear and Oshkosh are just two of the leading brands available. Catering for all your children's wear needs including swimwear, casual wear and footwear. Chalor's friendly staff offer great service and more time to help you make the right choice for your children for summer. Chalor's Fashion Centre, Peel Street, Tamworth for all your children's wear needs. month with every 5,600, 7,500 and 10,000 gallon tank well tank ordered, you receive a free Davy pump. The 350p with the 5,600 gallon tank, the Davy 500h pump on the 7,500 and 10,000 gallon tanks. Ring Tank World now for Australia's largest range of sizes and colours, delivered free to just about anywhere. And after 20 years, Tank World tanks won't taste rust or leak. Guaranteed. Do I have something in my teeth? He's sophisticated. Women admire him. Men want to be him. Damn, I'm good! He's Ace Ventura, Pack Detective. Can you feel that? Huh? Bigger and better than ever before. He wants to go off road! Jim Carrey. No, what's it? the do? And Bruce Spence in the premiere of Ace Ventura when nature calls. Safe 30 Sunday on NBA. <laughs> Now, Imperial restart. They've been shaken up by their try. 24 points to 14. This ball has gone out on the fall. Deary me, mistake. Half the mistake continues to plague both sides in the second half. The Hawks aren't home by any means. And they can't afford to relax as Gary Davidson takes the kick for touch. Craig Seven will be talking to his troops. They've suddenly fought back. 24-14, referee, good refereeing, Jason Higgins, blowing time off at every opportunity, so there's no time, we get, uh, no time wasted, we get plenty of football as Dave Campbell's thrown to the ground, 23 metres out, from the try line, now the pass comes away, oh, it's blocked by Lindsay Snell, I won't blame Lindsay, the ball was thrown hard at him, he tried to step off his left foot, come back in at the same time, and uh, he's lost the ball. Now, what would you do if you're in Brill, Robbo? Would you, you play three or four here and then boot it, or, or yes, put I, the uh, slipper into it now? I'd certainly get rid of it. The Amarillo side look very tight, and for them to uh, trail back and, and go uh, further with the ball towards the try line would certainly uh, uh, be a very big ask at this stage of the game. I'd certainly be uh, getting rid of the ball and playing it down the other end of the park. Well, they decided to run it because they're just short of halfway. That's four on them. Well, that could come from confidence, uh, Greg, mm. and they should have plenty. They're up by ten, and uh, time's winding down. Jimmy Stevens has it on five, on halfway. They work a short blind. Peter Stevens over the head back there of uh, Trindle. Going back to the ball, actually, Trindle's playing back at, uh, as Tag is playing back at fullback now. And good tackle, too. A player trailing through. That's young Peter Ashenden. Good chase by Ashenden, too. Armadale back on their quarter line. Armadale player back on halfway, receiving treatment, too. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, he's with the trainer, and he doesn't look too well. McElroy. That's uh, Taggart, the way it goes to McCann, to McGann. And he's met just outside the quarter line. Pass away to Craig Waters. Where's his runners? Long pass out to Davidson. He's got Salmon in front of him. Comes across, steps away from Goldman. But coming across is Damien Smith, who's played really well the 5-8 to uh, halt his progress. Connors, little chip over the top. 
Regay, oh, good basketball type skills, but it's eventually dived on by Craig Semmer. Well, Thomas did all he could, and he kicked the ball <laughs> and then uh, realised that he wasn't going to catch it, so he knocked it back out of his head, but there was nobody there to claim it. As we see Adam Kelly making another incisive bust. 32 out in centre field. Pete Stevens goes away from dummy half. Back inside to Kelly. Kelly shows the ball as though he's going to kick. Throws it anywhere. Hits the referee. That's a dead ball. The referee uh, indicating, yes, it did hit me. Who gets the scrum feed here? As yes, we look so at the, the other advantage goes to the attacking side of that situation. So Everell will get the feed. Scott Park coming back on as the Armadale bun uh, bench looks a little bit disconsolate with this uh, scoreline of 24-14. Inverell, of course, playing with 12 men for the last to try. Damien Smith throws the dummy on the open side, runs into Craig Waters, almost gets away from him. He's got players outside, but he can't get the pass away. Into dummy half is Peter Ashton. He scoots away from that position, runs into the forwards, Ashton. And only a little fellow, but very quick off the mark. David Walls at dummy half. Peter Stevens. Peter looking for runners. Pass away to Craig Semin. He can't get the pass away. Wood, uh, Mick McLennan wanted it. Right in front of the uprights. Another try here. We'll see the grand final all over for another year. Pete Stevens. Back it goes to Mick McLennan. And McLennan is over. That's yeah, it. Put. It's all over. McLennan has scored the try for the Inverell side. The second row as the supporter comes in. There's the hooter, I think, in the background as well. I can only uh, imagine that with... Um, there That's it is now, actually. Break. I was, went 10 seconds early. There's the supporters going mad. And why wouldn't they, too? Because in Perel are the Group 19 grand finalists. Whether they'll have a kick for goal is problematical. They don't need to. And look at the boys. They're joyous. Uh, joyous. They were gone, as I said, uh, Steve, five weeks ago. A lot of people said they wouldn't make the four. Uh, the boys had confidence. Let's have a look at the final try. Yes, put this down to Peter Stevens. His short passing game around the rack has been outstanding today, and he's had an outstanding game in general. And uh, we spoke about him as being an experienced player early, when he certainly led from the front. Well, there's uh, Glenn Partridge, Craig Salmon, Peter Stevens. Adam Kelly, great impact in this side. Look at the jubilation. I mean, this is a club that has not won a first grade premiership for 23 years. They've been in three grand finals since then. They've lost all three. And uh, it'll be a big monkey off their back. Let's have a look at the try scorers for you. The Inverell side, Glenn Partridge won, Scott Park won, Timmy McIntyre won, Peter Stevens won, Mick McLennan scored a try as well. As the two teams in centre field shake hands for the 98 uh, premiership, for the Armadale side, Robbie John Gripper scored two. Gavin Taggart won two tries to Gavin Taggart, two goals to Gavin Taggart. The full-time score, I don't think they took the kick, would have been 28 points to uh, 14. Steve Robinson, your summary of this match. It's just too hungry, Inverell. Uh, they won a victory today and they played accordingly. Four marks to them. I thought that uh, they were outstanding in their go forward. I thought over the park they outplayed Armadale and uh, full credit to them. Congratulations to Craig Salmon and his coaching staff and to the Inverell Club on wrapping up the under 80 Premiership in first grade. To Armadale, commiserations to Craig Waters and, uh, and the boys from the Greens and um, uh, we've enjoyed a very good game of rugby league here this afternoon. Steve Robinson, our co-commentator this afternoon and uh, we'll leave you with... Uh Great jubilation here at Rugby League Park at Armadale. Inverell Hawks are the Group 19 Premiers for 1998. 28 points to 14 winners over Armadale. On behalf of my co-commentator Steve Robinson, this is Greg Cachel uh, wishing you a wonderful off-season and we'll see you with Group 19 Rugby League again on NBN Sport in 1999. been a father, a lover, a protector. Now his proudest moment could be his last. Who shot Al Bundy? Find out in the special one-hour series final of Married with Children, 9.30 Monday.